I paint flowers because I'm, I'm interested in flowers. I, 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 I'm interested in uh, many aspects of, uh, of the science of, uh, of, of how they grow and why they grow. I'm interested in the patterns of light that are cast on their, their, their petals. I'm interested in the mathematics of their re repeating shapes. Uh, those, those are the things that, that I'm interested in and that's why I, I paint these flowers. As far as inspiration, um, my inspiration comes from a very different different place. What has inspired me over the years has been uh, examining and appreciating other artists' work, and this this goes way back uh, for me, but particularly in high school. Um, you know, when I made my first trip to the Museum of Fine Arts in Boston, and I saw my my, my my first glimpse of uh, old masters paintings, something that I've I've, I've uh, been really interested in and studied um, outside of the normal uh, you know method of structured education. I've taken it upon myself to 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 learn as much as I can about the old masters and how they paint. And I was particularly struck by a very large painting by Peter Paul Rubens. Um, I don't know, Cyrus offering a severed head to the Queen Tamiris, I think is the name of it. It's a gigantic painting. It's about 12 feet long and uh, four feet high. It's a remarkable work. And I was always in awe by that painting, particularly the little dog in the lower right. But that spurred me on at that young age when I had just learned how to oil paint. It, it, it was a realistic painting. I knew I wanted to paint realistically. There was something about that painting and other old master paintings in that museum that that, that held me uh, in awe. Uh, in, in fact, to this day, it still does. But um, you know, uh, later in later on, you know, as I got into college and and then finally into my my professional career, um, I, I kept studying by reading about the old masters, Rubens, and in particular the uh, the Mannerists, which is a uh, a, 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 a really interesting part of the Renaissance that, you know, begins around uh, 15, 20 or so and continues on for 80 or 100 or so years into the early, the early 1600s, the 17th century. I'd say that the uh, Mannerist probably was uh, kicked off in large part by, by Titian uh, uh, and his... Uh, um, contemporaries and ended around the time of Rubens as death as as we moved into the Rococo period after that but that that whole period of art that hundred or so years has held me in awe even even to this day um, when I was finally able to travel uh, extensively and afford to be able to do it uh, I did a burst of traveling in the early 80s through the mid 80s to uh, actually see these paintings. I, I, I went to Europe uh, many times. I, I, I went to the studio of Rubens and I, I, and I went to the studio of, of Rembrandt and I, I, I went to uh, Italy to see uh, Titians and, and Bronzinos and, and uh, uh, you know, I went, I went to the Netherlands and the Low Country to, to see the works of of uh, uh, Ruben's contemporaries, uh, uh, Bartholomew Spranger and Jacob Jordanes, and there was something about those works. I I I I don't know what it is, but there was something about their approach to painting, a very structured approach to painting, that I I thought was going to be a method that 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 I could use to emulate my own work. Uh, what exactly is that? In short, it was. Um, uh, a, uh, a drawing, perhaps, or a sketch on a tone canvas, uh, an underpainting, which was either fully or, or, or partially realized, and then uh, a, a series of uh, applications of uh, transparent and semi-transparent parent and then opaque paint layers built up on, t on top of that uh, as, a, as a method uh, of painting that was, that was, that was expedient, um, um, that was, that was, uh, that, that made sense from the point of view of, uh, the materials that were available at the time. 
to use them in a, in a proper way in terms of what dries first and what doesn't. And, and then the actual pigments themselves, although they were of course all hand ground and prepared, there was mediums that we used in the case of oil that, that allowed these painters to uh, create these, these very powerful, uh, beautiful works that have survived for 500 years and what, what was it about that that, that that allows us even to this day for those paintings to survive and for us to enjoy them and view them, particularly in the case of Rubens? Nobody knows the medium he used, but there are ideas of what, what, what he used. And he was a most remarkable painter, um, Peter Paul Rubens. He lived to be about 63, 64 years old, and his, and his professional painting career, which spanned about 40 years, he completed little over 1,400 major works, uh, which is just a, a staggering amount of work, not to mention the fact that he was also an ambassador, a, a, uh, a, a, a consultant to, to kings and business people. Um, um, he was uh, an, an, an incredible businessman. Uh, and his, his studio, um, to, to, to turn out work at the pace they did, uh, he, he employed uh, assistants that specialized in different aspects of painting. Um, and, and it was, it, you know, it, it just held, held my interest uh, to the point where I had to go see as much of Rubens' work as, as I could. Uh, and I did. Um, I, I went to uh, Antwerp, to his studio. I, I, I saw his work, uh, retrospective of his work in, 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 in Brussels which allowed me to see not only finished paintings, but um, his concept work, his studies, and some of his underpaintings, uh, which were never completed with overpaintings, and they survived to this day. And it was just uh, absolutely beautiful, brilliant. Uh, uh, the the, the, the uh, principles that he, and techniques that he used in his painting, and we'll leave aside for a moment, the brilliant design and composition of his works and just talk about the technical aspects because that's what really interests me. Um, I, I tried to glean as much knowledge as I could uh, about uh, Rubens's technique and his contemporaries and exactly how they did what they did because there isn't anything left of their secret recipes. They're long lost. But we have an idea of how he worked uh, and what his mediums were to successfully create uh, the paintings, the way he created them. Uh, so um, that, to this day, has, has brought me on a quest, uh, a, a, a search of knowledge uh, and a, a, a fine-tuning of that, that body of knowledge to discover the technique that worked for so many uh, of, of these artists uh, to, to nail down design and compositional problems ahead of time so they could solely devote their time to working out the nuances of color and color mixing. Uh, that's exactly what I do today uh, in, my, in my own paintings. Uh, I've, I've come up with my own structured approach to painting. I, I, I've written about it. I've had some articles published about it. Um, I've actually written a book, which I don't know if that will ever be published, but um, it, it, it works for me. It, it allows for me to work in successive stages and solve a series of problems. I'm a very organized person, so it allows me to solve uh, a certain set of problems within the overall task of completing a, a, major, a major piece of work. Uh, so how do I do that? Um, I do it the way they did it. I, I, I nail down my design and composition first. I transfer it to my panel. I create a, a uh, completed uh, underpainting, a monochrome underpainting, and then I apply a transparent and semi-transparent paints over that in successive layers and varying degrees of opacity till, till the painting is done and then it's varnished. And that's pretty much exactly what they did and how they did it. The difference is they had a very limited set of palettes, mostly earth colors and a handful of uh, so, some, some bright colors. Uh, I won't get into uh, the technical aspects uh, or the physical property of those pigments. But today, 
uh, we have a huge range of, uh, of modern pigments that I've explored to develop my own palette, which is a combination of old pigments and new pigments. So um, I'm able to bring that all to bear on how I do what I do. Uh, so to end this rather long uh, discussion, I just want to say that um, it's not so much uh, inspiration, in my opinion, that, that uh, makes uh, their work, uh, or all artists' work perhaps, but certainly my work, successful i i find it to be uh more uh more 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 perspiration it's more hard work it's it's just hard work and doing the same thing over and over again until you get really really good at it so it's maybe you know 10 percent inspiration and 90 percent perspiration that's to me uh i think woody allen said that so i i, I don't want to take that as my own. I believe Woody Allen said that about what it takes to be successful. But I think it's a very true thing and it's what has been my kind of guiding principle for all this great many years. Um, that's about it. Thank you very much for uh, sitting through this and listening to it. And uh, you have a, uh, a very safe and happy 2021.